Hello there and welcome back to my channel. My name is Doug and I have another fun pen video for you today. Today it's a Grail pen. A Grail? It's the Platinum Preppy. Oh, what the tall name? Let's look at it right now. I wasn't expecting this fountain pen today. I actually went down to my pen store and uh, found this. Um, I've heard of this pen before. I've seen a number of re reviews of it. And it is the Platinum Preppy. And the Preppy is touted to be one of the best inexpensive fountain pens you can get. Um, by inexpensive, people generally mean under $5 US. Now, I have many examples of excellent fountain pens under $5 US, like a Jinhao 992 or a, a Jinhao X750 or X450. Uh, all excellent fountain pens uh, with a lot more going for it than this, but this is a really fascinating pen, so I, I thought I'd pick it up. I paid $6 uh, Canadian for it, um, and it is blue, and it comes with uh, a cartridge, and it has a number of different features to it. So I thought we'd look at this pen, we look at the, um, the features of the pen, and uh, then do a uh, writing sample and an evaluation. Um, I was at the store to pick up another bottle of my favorite ink in, on the planet, Hiroshizuku Konpeki. I just go through that ink like crazy. So without further ado, let's take a look at this Platinum Preppy. It's very, very light. I'll do some measurements and some um, size comparisons as well for you. Uh, but it has a very, very light plastic body. It has a snap cap. Um, but the cap is rather interesting. It has this patented platinum slip and seal with the spring. You can see the spring there. And what that does is when you snap the cap shut, it uh, engages that spring which pushes down this seal which seals off that nib and they claim that you can lay this pen aside for up to a year and it will still write. Not many fountain pens will do that. You'll find the same technology uh, in the um, uh, very beautiful uh, Platinum Century 3776 pen which run in, in Canadian dollars, about $220. I uh, played with a number of those pens today in the pen store and they are, are quite wonderful pens. But it has the same kind of uh, technology built into their $5 US version as compared to their $170, $180 US version of the 3776. So once you got the uh, cap off, you can see it's uh, slightly faceted in there, which gives the plastic a really nice kind of jeweled look. And one of the first things you want to know, does it post? Yep, it posts very nicely. It's very light, so it's not going to unbalance the pen at all. And then we have a clear plastic section, which is just tapered, very smooth, can be very slippery as well. Not as slippery as metal, but... Uh, and then we have this... Um, this small uh, pilot style nib and with that nib I thought well I've got a whole bunch of these nibs because I have them on my my Wingsung 3008 and I bought a bunch of them there's fines and extra fines and I have a medium as well so I wanted to see whether they actually fit on this pen and they do exactly fit. I haven't tried this nib, so I might just leave it on there. But the other nice thing about this is that the nib and feed come right out. You don't need any pressure on it at all. The nib and feed come out, and that nib slides right off that plastic section right there. And you can replace that. And it just goes right back in again. Just like that. Very simple. Now you open this pen up, the barrel, and inside is a cartridge, proprietary cartridge for platinum, the color of the pen that you bought, 
and this is available in a number of colors. I'll put up uh, an image here of all the colors that are available. And it comes in three different sizes, uh, 0 0.02, which is their extra fine, 0 0.03, which is their fine, and 0 0.05, which is their medium, which that's what this is. This is a medium 0 0.05 platinum. So with the section, of course it's clear section, and you can see that plastic feed, so you'll be able to see the ink through there. And, and then there's these plastic threads, and this is where you take the cartridge and you, you push it in here and it will break that ball bearing, which I assume acts as a uh, agitator in there, to get that ink flowing. But the cool thing about this pen is that it um, is eyedropperable. So you can fill this barrel up with ink and if you silicone grease this part of the section and you can see I put a little rubber o-ring or sorry silicone o-ring around there and close it up again that seals this off and this becomes a formidable amount of ink. The other cool thing about the barrel is that it has these facets on the inside. You can see them there and it gives us this really fascinating faceted flash which looks very cool. Um, I've also, this is very light plastic so one of the things that happens to these pens apparently is if you over screw them they will crack here and then you're out five bucks and you go get another one. So, uh, I'll give you some size comparisons of the Platinum Preppy, and uh, we'll do some measurements as well, and then I'm going to fill it up, I think I'm gonna eyedropper this, fill it up and we'll do a writing sample. Back at you. Da -da -da. And we're back with the Platinum Preppy. I've written with this a bit. Um, I've got to say it's uh, surprising uh, for the five dollars uh, what you get. So, um, you know, it feels relatively comfortable in the hand, posts deeply. The section's nice and large and long. It's not that much in girth, but it's long. And the, the uh, bumps there from up to the body aren't uh, that big. You can hardly feel them. So let's do uh, some writing samples with this pen. This is the Platinum. Preppy. This is a medium nib, what they call a 0 0.05. And I think it writes a bit fatter than that. The ink I've put in here is Diamine Oh, what is it? Diamine yeah, I was going to say it's the sapphire. It's not a sapphire. It's the Asa Blue, which is a turquoise -y kind of color. I always get confused because the Hiroshizuku Asagao is the sapphire-like color. And so uh, Diamine is kind of opposite to that. This is the uh, Asa Blue, which is a turquoise -y kind of color. So, it's very, very smooth. This is what surprised me for a $5 pen right out of the box. No tuning. Uh, it's very wet. As you can see.
and even uh, it keeps up very nicely. There's no line variation at all. And I think I might go back and get a fine point, the point zero three. The pens are marked right there. Point zero five, sorry, zero five it is, but it is a point zero five. And so the zero three would be the, the fine point. So let's uh, think about an evaluation for this pen. Uh, this was an interesting one for me because I was uh, uh, surprised at how well a $5 a, a pen that is $5 and feels like a $5 pen uh, wrote. So again, my categories are design and build. writing and feel the look and the overall value of the pen. Each of these categories is out of four, four being perfect, three being above average, two being a pass, one being a failure, and zero being a complete no show. So design and build. Well, um, for what it is, it's well built. Uh, it is an injection molded plastic, a uh, very, very light pen. I think the clip sucks. It is big and fat and stiff. And if you push it more, it just feels like it's going to snap right off. Get centered here. Um, and it's so fat that it's really actually difficult to get into a shirt. Um, but it's nice that it posts. Uh, this little um, slip cap in here is a nice feature. Uh, I have had this uh, pen, uh, not hard start, but it kind of skips on the downstroke when you first start writing with it. I've had that happen a number of times when I've just picked up the pen and started to write. So um, it's mass produced and it, uh, for what it is, it's fine. Uh, so I'm going to give it a three for design and build. Um, though the other nice thing I like about this, uh, the nib, is that it pulls right out and you can replace it with other nibs. And you can also replace it with um, a roller ball and with a felt marker, like a highlighter. So it's, it's fairly versatile. In terms of writing and feel, well, it's very, very smooth and uh, right out of the box and it's very nice but it skips on occasion and uh, I it just feels um, it feels like a uh, a Bic um, and so why would I do this as a as a um, a starter pen I think it's it's great uh, throw it in your pocket throw it in your bag um, and not worry about it if you break it, you know, go get another one. Um, but it, it feels like a cheap writing experience. And I'm not going to say inexpensive, I'm going to say cheap. Uh, because it is cheap. And uh, um, everything about it sort of speaks to cheap. So I'm going to give it a, a, a 2.5, just because I don't like writing with the pen. It's not awful, but I just, I don't think I would write with this a lot. And that's a lot of ink. I don't think I'll get through that. I'm going to give the fine a try and maybe it'll be a little bit better for me, but that's my feeling so far. In terms of the look, I'm just going to give it a one because I think it looks like crap. Um, pardon my French. Um, crap -ay. Um, it looks like a Bic pen. It looks like a dollar store pen. It writes a lot better than that, and I know it's get, getting great reviews from people and so forth, but I just, why would I do this? I think that fountain pens are about more than utility. It's an experience. It is the writing experience. Um, you can take this pen and throw it in your bag or 
throw it in your briefcase and and toss it around and throw it in the glove box of your car, fine. But uh, you're writing with a fountain pen, not a not a, a ballpoint, uh, not a rollerball. And uh, writing with a fountain pen is like a zen-like experience for me. You know, it is something that is you're go- going to take some time at it. And again, it's for me. Um, why would I write with a fountain pen over a ballpoint pen? If I need to write a, a grocery list, I can grab the, the ballpoint pen out of the drawer because there's a million of them in there. And it's utility. It's, but writing with a fountain pen is more than getting the data down. It's about being creative. It's about being artistic. It's about being expressive. And it is a zen-like experience, I've found. So that's my hit on the, the look and the writing and feel. This just feels cheap and utilitarian. Um, in terms of value, I'm going to say, I'm going to give it a three because it is a $5 US pen and um, you can get them in all those different colors and you can put different color ink in them and, and have them in a, in a cup next to your desk and do all kinds of notes and stuff like that and they're easily replaceable and so forth but um, um, it's still a fairly inexpensive pen and for what it is uh, it's fine it's a really good value um, when I look at the overall look here and you see this barcode on it and you see the, the coding on it, um, you know, it, it, as I said, it looks like a BIC. It looks like a disposable pen. Uh, there is a preppy crystal apparently that's completely clear and I don't think it has these markings on it which would be a bit of a step up for me. So we're looking at nine and a half out of 16. And I know that score is probably low for some people, that they feel the Preppy is a, is a terrific pen. I've seen another video where someone said it was their uh, under $10 pen of the year. Um, but again, why? And so that's my question, why would you want to uh, write with this pen? It's an, um, just in terms of the novelty, I find it interesting. Uh, but that's my take on this uh, cheap little pen. It really isn't a grail pen. It is uh, a knockabout, a throwout after you've used it a few times kind of pen. Anyway, that's how I feel about it. If you enjoy these videos, please like and subscribe. Uh, leave a comment in the comment field. How do you feel about the preppy? How do you feel about uh, fountain pen writing in, in general? Do you feel it's more than just getting a line down on the page? Uh, I think it's more than that. Uh, but again, that's my, my take on it. So tell me what you think of it uh, in the comments. If you want to be notified of future videos, please just uh, hit that bell as well. And you'll get a notification that another video is up. And until the next one. I thank you for watching. Oh gee, I can't even spell. See, there's that skip. See that? I knew it would happen. Again, thank you for watching. <laughs> and that's all she wrote. <laughs>